Life Audio. Hello. Thank you for listening to Your Daily Bible Verse, the podcast that examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm your host, Jennifer Slattery, and after this short word from our sponsor, We'll continue with our Journey to the Resurrection series with a discussion of today's Bible verse, Matthew 26, 4. Today's Bible verse is Matthew 26, 4. And they schemed to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. Yesterday, Jessica discussed a beautiful example of Jesus' loving, merciful, tender heart towards us. Knowing the people of Jerusalem would soon demand his death, knowing a mob would chant as one unified voice, crucify him, our Lord wept with love and longing over those very people. And in today's verse, evil began laying the necessary pieces to kill God's sinless son. But God used what men intended for evil for good, the redemption of many. As I prayerfully considered the actions of the religious leaders, not only surrounding today's verse, but throughout the Gospels, God reminded me of times when, like had occurred with the religious leaders, fear and jealousy have motivated me to act ugly, and of how easily I can convince myself that my motives are pure. And my actions correct? Even more alarming, there are many times when I am so self-deceived, I'm not even aware of the fear, the jealousy, or the pride driving my behavior. And usually when I step out of God's will and feel antagonistic towards one of his children, I am experiencing all of those soul states simultaneously. But as my therapist often reminds me, fear is a poor decision maker. A dangerous one, in fact, as are jealousy and pride. And while sadly, I haven't developed the spiritual maturity to always maintain a pure heart and holy self-awareness, I have learned and am learning to pray often, search me, Lord, and know me. Remove everything within me that keeps me from yielding fully to you. I wonder if the chief priests and Jewish elders who plotted to kill our Savior ever offered that prayer, or if they even considered their need to do so, maybe early in their religious journey, but they'd obviously not done this upon encountering Jesus, seeing his numerous miracles, all the people he'd impacted, and the powerful truths he spoke. If at any point they had paused to investigate their inner angst, I'm certain God would have led them to truth, to wonderful joy and peace-filled life. Instead, they chose fear, pride, and jealousy. Fear that Jesus's growing influence would concern the Roman authorities and cause them to strip the Jewish leaders power, and fear that they would lose their ability to oppress the people, and pride that drove them to elevate themselves, their desires, positions, goals, agendas, and dreams above Creator God. And that drove them to self-justify their behaviors and perspectives rather than embracing the humility that otherwise would have cultivated a responsive, repentant, and then purified heart. When I find myself battling pride, which is often daily, in fact, God often reminds me of James 4, 6, which tells me that God opposes the proud. Opposes. So in the original Greek, that's a military term used when a battalion aligned themselves against the enemy. So God opposes, comes against the proud, and likely because our pride always comes against God, against his wisdom and his plans. But then the verse continues with a beautiful promise. Our God gives grace, his unmerited favor, a complete giving of himself to the humble. In choosing pride, the chief priests and elders became enemies of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Their driving, all-consuming desire to elevate themselves above everyone else distorted their perceptions and caused them to view miraculous, beautiful acts of God with contempt. 
to view the most precious gift God has ever and will ever give mankind his son with contempt. And in so doing, they robbed themselves of the grace Jesus longed to give them. They clung to those things like power and prestige they thought would bring them security, fulfillment, and life, which only deepened the emptiness in their souls. And I'm forced to reflect upon times when I do the same. How often do I cling to those things I believe will give me life, but rob me of the very things my soul craves? I discuss this in greater detail in Session 5 of Holy Love's Unshakable, Unbreakable Joy Bible Study, which is available for free, the study and the video content. Visit their website or contact me through mine to learn more. This Lent, God is inviting us to prayerfully evaluate our hearts and to, through prayer and an ever-deepening reliance on and a yielding to our Savior, maintain humble, pliable, and spiritually connected hearts. Hearts that seek out Christ above all, knowing that He is and will give us all that we need. Let's pray. Holy Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, the one who knows us, who loves us, who sees us, and who died to give us life. We know we can trust him. He has proven himself trustworthy. We know that he will not withhold anything good from us. We know that he lavishes us with grace. And we know that you have good plan for us as well, Father. The one who freely gave your son also freely gives us everything we need to thrive, and we praise you for that. When we slip into pride, to fear, to jealousy, to self-justification, speak truth into our souls. Remind us that we are stepping further and further from true life, that we are stepping into increasing darkness, that we are robbing ourselves of the very things our souls most crave. Increase our trust so that we can recognize the life that you give and that we can pursue every good gift that is available through our faith in Jesus Christ. As we move towards our celebration of his death, and then his resurrection. May we come to know his heart better. May we come to trust his heart more. May we see his grace more clearly. May we live more deeply anchored in that grace. Thank you for the grace that you give through your son. And it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Your Daily Bible Verse is a production of Life Audio and Salem Media. If you liked what you heard today, please take a second to rate and review this podcast in your favorite podcast app so that more listeners like you can find the show. For more faith-filled, inspirational podcasts, visit us at lifeaudio.com. Music.